Yes, sir. Right, so now move to agenda item REZ 24-04. This is the Plyke Stone Road subdivision. This involves 62 acres. It is currently R1. The request is for R10, and it will be served by county utility. Mr. Taylor. Thank you, sir. Again, as stated, the 110 lot subdivision is requested here, and that's the zoning uh, desire for R10. You know, the property does have front on Playa Stone and a small portion there on Rockville Church. It's within the urban service area and suburban character area. And you do note some, some wetlands on the property which are noted and mitigated here <coughs> in the uh, proposed site plan. Now, in 2020, the Valentine subdivision was approved toward the east tenor half of this property. You'll note here that there were conditions regarding lot size. Um, you see the half acre lots along Playa Stone and down Simpson Lane. You see the third acre size lots in the light blue and the yellow being a quarter acre size lots. Some of those conditions also included the sidewalks and uh, lots facing the interior as well as the park amenities there. This is the proposed layout for the Playa Stone uh, road subdivision from the applicant. You'll again note the half acre lot sizes in orange along Playa Stone Road, the third acre lot sizes in the light blue there, and the quarter acre lots in the yellow as well. Just for reference, this is both neighborhoods, if approved, side by side, showing a mixture of densities. And again, the Planning Commission heard the request at their meeting. TRC analyzed the request and had uh, no concern from a technical standpoint. And again, noting the standards for exercising zoning power set forth in 10105, finds the request consistent with the comprehensive plan and land use patterns, and therefore recommends approval with conditions that lots of budding Clydesdale Road shall be a minimum of half acres in size. And that's what the Planning Commission recommended approval for was that condition for R10. Any questions for Mr. Dill? I guess the, the one I had um, might not be with um, JD, but possibly the attorney. It, it, I just want to know is the agreement that's signed by the developer um, and the neighbor uh, binding that's in this package? You're speaking of the same conditions that were put on the Byzantine? It's, it's a letter in here. Uh, applicant and neighbor agreed upon conditions. And I didn't know if that's technically binding or do we have to put it at a condition. If both individuals signed it. Yes, that's one. That's an agreement between the two parties. Unless you make it a condition, it's not a condition. It's a private. I was just wondering, I was looking at no vinyl and different things like that, and I know we have to finish that, you know, the factory binding. That's what we, it, as we said, as the attorney said, it is an agreement between the two parties. It's not an agreement between either one of them and the camp. Unless you make it a condition. Are there any other questions? All right. We'll now move into the public hearing portion of the meeting. Is there anyone in the audience that would like to speak in opposition to this request? Anyone that would like to speak in opposition? Hearing none, is there anyone that would like to speak in favor of this request? Please come forward and state your name and address for the record. My name is Farrell Scruggs, Jr. I go to Eagle Road, Valdosta, and I'm uh, representing Cat Creek Development and speaking in favor of the uh, zoning. Um, I'd like to ask for your positive consideration. Uh, we've taken careful consideration uh, in designing this project uh, with the, the mix of lots, the size of the lots, and the, uh, the road layout. Uh, plans in keeping with the surrounding developments taking careful consideration considering Valentine next door. Uh, it, uh, it meets the uh, surrounding developments in the comprehensive plan. Uh, uh, the county, you guys have made significant infrastructure investments in that area, so I think <coughs> that, uh, in keeping with that, they'll be used for this project. Um, I have worked with uh, Stephen Cooper. He's with Meadowood Subdivisions. That's who's opposed the one last time. And uh, I'm not sure who all he represents over there, but it's a, a good, good many of them that live there. And uh, he and I come up with the the, uh, 
the lot size mix and the square footage of uh, this P&I who signed the, the agreement. So, uh, and I have been asked many times, uh, it's, it is my intent to develop the subdivision. It is not sold to another outside developer. Uh, I'm saying that can't change, but I have not been contacted and it is not sold. Uh, so with that, I'm um, available for questions. Any questions for Mr. Crow? Thank you, sir. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in favor of this request? Please come forward and state your name and address for the record, please. Good evening, Stephen Cooper, 479 Summerfield Drive. As he mentioned, we work together. We put this agreement together to sign, saying that we would hope these conditions would be implemented into the sign if this was all approved. In the event, like you said, if it was sold to another developer, they would still have to buy it. And he, we agreed that it would be done to keep in conjunction with what's going on now. Um, I think it's not being in writing before with Valentine subdivision. We almost run into a debacle with exterior finishes. Uh, fortunately, we were able to resolve that. And we're trying to now just keep everything very consistent across the board so that all the development looks the same. So, hoping it can be made part of the condition so that if it were sold, like I said, anybody else would have to buy it by. Any questions for Mr. Cooper? Okay. Thank you, sir. We still have about seven minutes. Is there anyone else that would like to speak in favor of this request? Okay, hearing none, we'll close the public hearing portion of the meeting because we had no one in opposition. Then we'll close the public hearing portion of the meeting. Commissioners, I'll turn it over to you for your consideration. If I could just say, uh, I think that when we have groups like these two gentlemen, and they come together and, and you know, they kind of work it out among themselves, and there's, you know, the camaraderie, and, um, I think it is essential, even though I'm typically kind of against placing all these conditions, but I think since they've got an agreement that they agreed to, I, I, I would strongly urge us to make sure those conditions are made part of the rezoning. Because again, the last time there was four or five houses built, and there was a misunderstanding and siding had to be replaced. So if you're real quick, you'll have that opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, if you're ready for it, then I'll make a motion. I second. <laughs> All right, I'll call for a motion. I move that we approve with the conditions that we agree upon when we approve with Mr. Crow. In the agreement. In the agreement. Second. Second. Do I have a second? Second. I have a second. Any discussion on that motion? Hearing none, then I'll call the vote. Show of hands. All in favor, signify by aye. Any in opposition? You and I in opposition. I'm in favor. You're in favor. So it's unanimous. All right, well now.